Aloha and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is a multi-talented guitarist, writer, producer, and performer who is quickly becoming a recognized household name in contemporary jazz. Having shared the stage with the likes of Najee, Gerald Albright, Brian Simpson, James Lloyd, and Alex Bunyong, just to name a few. You can find him at jazz festivals and clubs and other events here in the United States and abroad. Not only is he my homeboy from Philadelphia, but let's welcome my guest today, Mr. David P. Stevens to the show. Aloha, David, how Hello. are you? Aloha, Gwen. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you for being here. As I stated, you are from Philadelphia. We, you, you're my homeboy from Philly. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You are my West, homeboy West from Philly. Philly. Yes, and I'm from yes, Southwest. Right. <laughs> but thank you so much for being here. I want people to know about you because when I first found out about you, um, it was on Facebook, and I think you mm -hmm. joined my Facebook group or whatever the case may be. And ever since then, you know, I've been following you. We've been messaging each other about trying to get you here to Hawaii, and you know that's going to happen, right? But tell that's, us. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> tell us and tell my viewers exactly what got you into music. So, uh, well, got me into music in general. I was um, just being in church and watching the church musicians and watching how cool they were and just the, all the music that was coming out of it. It just uh, got me really interested in it. And then as far as guitar, the guitar player who was at my church was a really cool guy. He, you know, the guy used to wear the muscle shirts and uh -huh. had Jerry curl, all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so... I thought he was so cool and I wanted to learn how to play, you know, um, to uh, just kind of initially to be like him. But then I really fell in love with the guitar. So. Now, <laughs> I know that you became a professional musician at the age of 14. Right. I know that. I know that for a fact. Right, right. <laughs> what other instruments <laughs> do you play? Because I know you play more than just a guitar. You're being modest right now. You play more than just a guitar. What other instruments do you play? Right. Well, uh, let's see. I play bass guitar. Um, I started off playing piano, and then I quit because uh, I just my mom was forcing me to do it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I quit. <laughs> so I quit piano, but then I picked it back up again. And um, so I do a lot of uh, piano. Um, I uh, write and produce, and I also sing. Yeah. And uh, I can play drums a little. I had to play drums in church for many years, so I can I can get by if I had to. Oh, really? <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, the title of the show, and you and I talked about this, it's David P. Mm -hmm. Stevens, The Return of Mr. Guitar. Who is Mr. Right. Guitar? Well, that was the nickname. Well, it's funny. I On my third album, my third album was actually, my fourth album was called Mr. Guitar. Uh -huh. And um, the ex explanation behind it was, that I had kind of tried to be some, another kind of artist. You know, I tried to like fit into a box and the Mr. Guitar was kind of the coming out party. It was like saying, listen, this is who I really am and this is what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. And um, and that was, it was a bold conversation piece. Even the cover had like a blue flame coming up out of the back of it. It was great. And um, it got a lot of attention. And um, just over the years, I kind of, kind of fell back into doing some other stuff and, you know, I've, I've recently realized, you know what, bring back that Mr. Guitar. And that's what it's, you know, so that's, that's, I like that's it. what's coming out now. I like <laughs> it. I like it. The return of Mr. Guitar. Now, for those of that's you right. that, <laughs> for those of you that don't know, I, we, I recently saw you, what, last month at the Long Beach Jazz Festival. Right, right. right. Yes. Saw yep. you at the Long yep. Beach. Finally met in person. Yes, that's where we finally, <laughs> finally met, and you right. were just, you are just amazing, just amazing. Thank I've heard you. your, I, and I tell you this all the time. When I see your things um, come through in the Facebook group, and and just hearing you in general, you are amazing. But this is the question Thank that you. I want to ask you: Is okay. what what sets you apart from other guitarist, what it, what sound? What makes your sound different from others? So um, the first thing is 
I had the unapologetic silly edge. You know, um, we were born and raised in Philadelphia. <laughs> they, it's a certain, <laughs> it's a certain style that is bred, you know, and kind of like in, in, uh, installed and instilled, whatever you want to say, in us. And um, and so I have that, and it's a, it's a whole, you know, kind of a swagger thing, and you know, mm-hmm. then there's just also all of the influences that I had, um, which kind of was, was shaped my sound. So I feel like my sound is more like soulful. Um, with a little bit of uh, rock in it, a little bit of fusion, mm-hmm. and um, and then you know, and then singing too also kind of helps frame the way that I play my notes differently. Now, we, you talked about your your influencers. Who are some mm-hmm. of those influencers? Who are the, some of the people that well, influenced you? They range. So the uh, the first introduction was George Benson, mm-hmm. and then. And into Steve Lucifer and Mike Stern and John McLaughlin and um, John, John Schofield and just all these heavy jazz cats, uh, you know, fusion jazz cats. And those, those are my, and then Hiram Pollock, I would say, was probably one of my biggest influences. Nice. Oh, and then I can't forget, I can't forget Norman Brown. Norman oh, Brown no, you was cannot. Like, <laughs> No. <laughs> See, I've, 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 no, I've read cute. about you, so I know, I know some of this stuff, I know some of your influences, and I guess Norman Brown, George Benson, all those heavy hitters are your influences, and I can hear it in your playing. Right. When you play, I can definitely hear it. I hear, I hear that mixture of, of all of them. Now, you right. have worked, <laughs> you have worked with many. You have worked with many uh-huh. artists, okay? Right. Mm-hmm. Who would you like to collaborate with? Somebody that you haven't worked with. Who would you um, like to would, collaborate with? There are many. I would love to work with Fantasia. I would love to work with Maxwell. Ah. I would love to work with Jill Scott. Um, you know, just those mainly singers. Um, you know, I've, I've been blessed to work with a lot of jazz artists mm-hmm. um, as far as um, instrumentalists. Mm-hmm. But... I, I've always wanted to do more, a lot more with singers. I've done some stuff. I had Jaguar Wright on one of my albums. Um, I had, um, uh, oof, I don't want to start naming stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So, Mike McComb, I mean, so many people. So, I really like to collaborate with singers. Um, you know, I feel like they bring out a different creative side. So, so those that I mentioned, I would really love to work with them. Awesome. Awesome. Now we're going to talk about your albums. You have, and I have them listed here because I, I couldn't, I could not remember them at all. Um, <laughs> but we're going to start, you know, starting in 1999, you had, uh-huh. was it From Thoughts to Actions, correct? Oh, yeah, that's right. Right. It was a gospel album. That's right. Okay. <laughs> uh, 2005, you had Timeless. That's right. 2008, you had, was it The Shed? The Shed, uh-huh. And then 2013... Yeah, and, <laughs> <laughs> and in 2013, you had Epiphany. Mm-hmm. 2014, you had Mr. Guitar. Right. And these last two that I'm going to get to, 2016, you had an album titled Love City, which they right. say was one of your best albums, right? Right, that's what, yeah. Right. yeah. And then 2000... They, they before... Huh? I'm sorry. No, no I was going to say, they said that before the last one came out. Yeah, exactly, and that's what I was getting to. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm getting to. So then now 2018, <laughs> which is your latest one, Rogue, mm-hmm. and I've heard right. both of them. You know, I just love your music. I'm a fan of you anyway. But Thank you. I, I, I'm not even going to tell you which one I like better. But I'm about to put okay. you on the spot and ask you which one of your albums out of all of those and anything that you've done, which one is your favorite? So <laughs> it's hard to, to do that, but I will. I'm uh-huh. going to say, I'm going to say Mr. Guitar was, was between Mr. Guitar and Rogue. It's a tie. I mean, because those are the albums that I took the most chances, most artistic, um, yeah, most artistic chances. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of, even though I really love Love City and all of them, um, they, they all have an interesting story. Like Timeless, when that came out, I was trying to decide what I wanted to be. So it's kind of, you can hear 
there's all kinds of influences going on through that album. But, you know, as I started to get older, I started to kind of, you know, be able to mirror whatever was going on in that particular time um, frame and make a, create, you know, an album from that. So, um, yeah, so I would say Mr. Guitar mm-hmm. and Rogue. So what was your thought process? What was your thought process on Rogue when you were making Rogue? What 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 how did you come about with that title and you know with the album with the album title? What was your thought process on that? Well, again, I, I I probably because I'm in the smooth jazz genre and, and don't get me wrong, I love I love the genre, I love the guys who you know and, and the ladies who are performing and I think it's amazing. But mm-hmm. I think um I wanted to kind of veer off from it. On, on this last album, I wanted to do something that was a little more edgy and, a, and showed a little bit more of my uh, range. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so if you if you like really dig in, you can hear all kinds of stuff in that album because it was it was made to like be a departure from everything that I had already done. So, um, so I'm I'm excited about that one because it's just like I mean you know how you have your song everybody has their songs in the key of life and for me I feel like that was my that was my one. That you was know? it, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> now, right. you recently, and, we, and we've discussed this, you recently moved from Philly mm-hmm. to California. How's that been for you? Uh, I love, let me say, I love LA. It has been amazing. Amazing. It's hot. But... <laughs> <laughs> Different it's from not, Philly. Like today, yeah, like today. <laughs> oh my goodness, my computer. The first time I've ever seen the temperature thing pop up on the computer, and it just kept shutting down. But you know, it's just hot. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Other than that, it's been amazing. It's been one of the best moves that uh, that I've made. Um, you know, career wise, it's something going on every day. And that's what I was so going to ask you, career wise. If you think it was one of your your best moves, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and everybody's here. So yes. you get things done a little quicker. Because it's like, hey, instead of, you know, hey, um, can you send this file? It's like, yo, come over and record this part. And then we're done. You know, and yeah. it's, a, it's the easiest thing. So I, I like that. I like that. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, we have to go. We're going to go on a quick break, everyone. And we will be right back. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. Aloha, my name is Duration. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii. I will be hosting a show here every other Wednesday at 1 p.m. And we will be talking to a lot of experts and guests around sustainability, social justice, the future here in Hawaii, progressive politics, and a whole lot more. So please tune in and thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Hello, I'm Mufi Hanneman. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101, where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. It's been great for us in the past. We need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. And I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. And with me today, I have one of my favorites, one of my homeboys from Philadelphia, multi-talented smooth jazz artist, Mr. David P. Stevens. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I am so happy that you are here um, with me. Um, well, you're not here. I wish you were here with me in the studio, but you're here with yeah, me we, on the show. <laughs> we have to do that. We have to do that when I come. We got to go do something yes. in the studio. That would be cool. Most, <laughs> most definitely. Now, we've talked about a few things. Um, we've talked about your albums. We've talked about you moving to, to California. But one thing that I do want to um, talk about, and I, and I ask this of everyone. I ask this of everyone, all of my guests. And I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. that... You grew up playing music in the schools, right? In Philadelphia? In my school? Kind of, sort of? No. No. I actually, I was playing outside of school. Outside never, of school. I never got in. Yeah, I never got in the, in the school band because I was so busy doing stuff outside of school. 
<laughs> well, well, my question, <laughs> my question to you, because I know that I played music in the schools, and I know a lot of other people have played music in the schools. Um, you know, mm -hmm. for me, even up through um, college at Hampton University in the marching band. So my yes. my thing is. Right now, they are taking the arts and, and music out of the schools. In some schools, they are. What is your thought on that? Um, I think that's horrible. I mean, I think, you know, even, even though I didn't play music in school, I had a lot of friends who are hit producers today and mm -hmm. hit, hit writers today um, and musicians and, and everybody who got their start playing in school. And I know for many of them, the uh, music program saved their lives. You know, it was something to do and gave them hope, gave, you know, up in the, to fulfill their dreams. So I think it's, it's awful to take, um, you know, music programs or any kind of artistic programs out of school. Um, you know, we, I think there needs to be um, some kind of outside funding or, mm -hmm. or something like that that should go into um, to helping to bring the instruments back and create programs if the school district can't afford it. So cutting that is just, to me, is is a uh, Expression. Yes, yes, and I, and I, you know, I agree with I. I definitely, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I definitely agree with you. Now you're becoming, you are, you're, you're, you're an amazing artist, and you know, you're still moving up. Them, I, <laughs> them songs are moving up on on the charts. For right. new artists that are coming into the music industry, some make it and some mm -hmm. don't. What would what advice would you give to them? What what advice would you give to a new artist that's coming into the industry today? Um, a couple of things. One, I would say study your craft. Um, make sure that you are, you know, because you're competing against a global market now. It's not just um, competing against, you know, uh, local talent. I mean, with the internet, you're competing against the best artists. So you got to make sure that your your talent is up there as well. But then I would say focus a lot on your um, foundation building, which is like your website, your EPK, your um, you know all the things that you need to send to promoters, all the materials that you need. Make sure you focus heavily on those things because um, you know those are the things that are going to get you know draw people to you. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, and learn the business. If nothing else, learn the music business. Because you know, um, <laughs> it is I, a business. I can't trust that enough. It is a right. business for right. real. It is a business for right. real. Now, you right. know, you know I love your music, David, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you think that you'd be able to play a little something for us right now? Sure, sure, sure. Um, Just a little something, something. Mm -hmm. Just a little something, yeah, something. Yeah, I'll try to do it. I don't know if uh, he'll be able to hear it, but I'll try. Okay. Can you hear that? I can. You don't hear the talk anymore. I don't even know what you want. Mm -hmm. You can say I love you no more. Saying how we feel is no love. Something is no love. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. So now, yes, you definitely need to come to Hawaii for real. <laughs> for real. You definitely need to come to Hawaii for real. What projects do you <laughs> What projects do you have coming up? What what's going on? What what you got coming up? Where can well, people right go to now, see? We're doing, oh, um, cool. I'm actually doing a lot of writing and production. So I have an interesting story. I'm just this is my last week of classes until I finish my master's degree in business. And uh -huh. I paused this year. I paused to um to finish my, my, my business degree. And so I did not um focus so much on, on performing and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. this coming year, you'll be able to see me in a lot more places, um, working on some new, new working on a new project, but uh, also writing and producing for a lot of other people. So I just did a song called The Breeze, which is by Latoya London featuring Najee. And that song is just hit the charts, just hit the radio charts. So um, wow. doing a lot of writing and production. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that one. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Um, just uh, yeah, so just doing a lot of writing and production and um, beginning to start to book uh, shows for, for the coming year. Nice. Now, you have a website. So where can people find you on your website? What's, what's your website? So my website is davidpstevens.com. And um, you can go there, find out all the latest information. Um, all my social media is, is, is uh, David P. Stevens. So Instagram, Facebook, all of that stuff. And I'm, I try to be pretty interactive, um, <laughs> you know, and, and try to. Sometimes there's so many messages, I'm like, but, you know, I do try to be, um, <laughs> I try to respond. <laughs> wow. So now you're working on your master's. You're at, you're at Berkeley, yeah? Right, Berkeley College of Music. Wow, how's that going between? I don't know how you do that. It's just, I guess it's just like with anything between doing your studies and, and working and, and everything else, sort of like me juggling stuff around. So I know that right, has got right. to be hard. It was hard. I had to shut down literally everything because the work was so grueling. It was, it was literally all day, every day you had to be um, working on, you know, on these assignments. And so I don't even know what life is. I don't remember life before it. And you know how it's so much work. It's just like, man, what am I getting ready to, like, the freedom I'm about to experience is, is amazing. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you so much for joining me here on the Hawaii thank Smooth you. Jazz Connection. For all of you that want to know more about my guest, my homeboy, Mr. David P. Stevens, go to davidpstevens.com, and I'm going to tell you, you will not be disappointed. His bio, where he's going to be playing, everything is on that website. And go out and see him. He is amazing. Just amazing. Again, David, I thank, thank you. you so much for joining us here, here no and on the show. Um, and we de definitely need to get you here in Hawaii, most definitely. Thank you. I can't wait. I'm excited. I, I've been to Hawaii one time, and I enjoyed it. And you enjoyed so it. I'm looking to come back. Yes. And now, now you're even closer. Leave. Now you're even closer, because right. before you came from yes. Philly. So now you're even yes. closer, which is awesome. Well, we'll make sure that we yes. get you, that we will get you back here. To my audience awesome. of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection, thank you very much, and until next time. Aloha and God bless.